Did you hear that? The floor is rising for Auburn's 2024 class. Freezing temperatures are likely for several hours inland and a few hours closer to the coast. Yes. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen Every single day joining us, Montgomery radio legend and the best looking man in the world, Daryl Daprich filling in for our good friend, Lindsey Crosby, who's killing it, covering the MLB draft as we record this. Daryl, we landed, Auburn landed a 2024 defensive end slash defensive tackle. We'll discuss about the different things Malik Blockton can do once he arrives to the SEC. We'll also uh, hear from some of the things that his high school coach um, Coach Shook from Pike Road shared some info with you, and we'll also kind of pontificate who could be next for this Auburn 2024 class. But first things first, Daryl, I think when you look at the addition of Malik Blockton committing to the Tigers as he did over the weekend, I think it raises the floor of Auburn's 2024 class. I don't think this is a guy that's going to start year one, but I do think this is a guy that when you look at his frame, and when you look at what Auburn has done with defensive linemen and what Coach Garrett has done with defensive linemen over the course of his career, I think he's set up to have a huge sophomore slash redshirt sophomore slash true junior season a few years from now. This is a perfect example of a kid that when they when he gets rated coming into a class from a star evaluation or evaluation from a coaching staff, you have to put a little bit of an extra value to it because of the position he plays. In mm-hmm. my in, inherently, when you get somebody along the line of scrimmage, whether it's offensive line or defensive line, I think when you look at, you know, he's a four-star composite kid. He's from a right. uh, he's from a program that's on the rise now at Pike Road, one of the elite programs in the state. But the fact the position he plays, and maybe when we talk later about the versatility that he could show as he grows, puts on weight to that frame and matures in college, it's inherently a little bit higher rated than what he gets ranked from a star system, which is .8902 or whatever it is, because of the position he plays. Yep, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. And so, but you just look at his body, we'll talk about some of the comments that his high school coach said about him in a little bit, but it's just how athletic he is for a guy with his size, and there's no sign of him slowing down because he's got that room in his frame to add more weight, which is always, which is always a good thing. I mean, you talk about getting guys when they're younger and developing them. That's been a big thing Auburn fans have kind of been clamoring for. They want more of that development. I think Malik blocked in two or three years from now, we're going to look back and say, this kid got on campus and was a good player, but he got better every single year in the system. I I think Malik blocked in a setup to really succeed in the future here. There's some things that we I didn't get direct quotes from his head coach. You know, we'll talk about those later. But there's some some other areas where I heard Coach Shook talk to the media Saturday when blocked and committed. Sure. And one of the biggest attributes I kept hearing Coach Shook say was his work ethic and how much he's like a big time weight room warrior. He loves getting in the weight room, putting on you know muscle and working like a madman. Well, you know, that equates at the next level. When you go to the next level and you just keep getting after it and one of your biggest things you are, one of your biggest attributes is how hard you work or how much you enjoy being in the weight room. Yeah. It, it, that That's going to go hand in hand with what you just talked about. The progression, the natural progression. He's got some talent. He's got right. the frame to add weight. And then he's got the desire to add good weight, not Nacho Belgrande weight. You know what I'm saying? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, and we talked about him when we recorded the show for Friday, talking about like he's probably going to commit over the course of the weekend. And one of the things in my notes when I was watching his tape from his junior year, which is exciting because he's got a whole other year to kind of get better and you know ready himself for the SEC now that he knows that that's what's in front of him, is you know he never really gave up positioning at the line of scrimmage. I mean, there were times where he'd get beat and he'd get you know pushed out or whatever, but he never gave up ground. He would get turned. From time to time, you know, the, you know, maybe, maybe he kind of would no longer be square to the line of scrimmage and we get turned. And so we couldn't make the tackle, but he never got pushed back. Like he never got driven off the ball, which is good, right? That's obviously a good thing. 
That tells me his technique needs to get a little bit better. And Cole Pinkson wrote about that at Auburn Live. It's good to see that when other people say similar things to you, it's like, okay, I'm not alone in watching this tape. So the ability is there. The technique needs to get better. But still, he just finished his junior year. Like, he's got plenty of time. Plenty of time to fix all of that. Because defensive line is more than just strength. It's more than just that first step. It's all about technique and learning how to use that big body and generate leverage. And he'll learn that. He'll learn that some his senior year at Pike Road. And then he'll obviously learn that a ton once he gets to the SEC and these college coaches get their hands on him. I'll tell you something, if you're an Auburn fan, to be excited about. I cannot overstate this enough. I touched on it on our Friday podcast, but I want to reiterate this for those that are tuning into this that may have missed it. Do not undervalue the new head coach and the type of head coach that Granger Shook is when you talk about technique and fundamentals. Mm. He is a defensive, he played linebacker in college, Granger Shook did. Okay. He is a defensive savant. He loves the defensive side of the ball. Trinity got where they got the last three years in the playoffs because of, they had one of the best defenses in the state. That is a direct result of Granger Shook and his coaches. He can coach defense. You wait, you mark my words, to watch the progression and the maturation process of Blockton his junior or senior year, not only because he got bigger, faster, stronger, more mature, but how he's going to get coached up. Book it. That's something to be excited about if you're an Auburn fan. Yeah, coaching matters. I mean, th there's no other way to put it. Coaching matters. You can have a three-star or a four-star or a five-star, but they all can still get better before they arrive at their college destinations. And, and I think Blockton is going to certainly do just that. As far as Auburn setting its footing a little bit more in the city of Montgomery, I mean, how do you think that kind of plays into a into a factor here? Uh, city of Montgomery used to be a harvest for Montgomery. They would go get Jeff Davis and Robert E. Lee kids like crazy. Yeah, and it, it got a little bit barren here the last the last ten years. And so the fact that they dipped into Montgomery Catholic, which is an elite program, to get Jeremiah Cobb last year, they got a little bit of, of players from. Uh, Park Crossing, which was a, a, an emerging school. That's where Marcus Harris went, Blockton's brother. Right. Now you dip your foot into Pike Road, where I, I cannot remember the two kids last year that looked like they were going to flip to Auburn. They didn't. They ended up going to Alabama. They were two Pike Road kids, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a this is a little bit of a, a a sounding shot right here that you go to Pike Road, you go to Catholic, and you get because Catholic, albeit a private school. And but they're not their football program is elite. It's like a big time six A seven A school. That's how they sure. run it. And and I'm telling you right now, I've watched them play. They would they would beat a lot of six A and seven A teams. Pike Road is emerging. It's a growing, a rapidly growing part of Montgomery, as far as just bursting with shopping centers and school district and people moving there. Mm -hmm. So they are going to be elite. And you better start picking athletes out of that school if you want to be successful in beating the Clemson, Georgias, and Alabamas because Pike Road is going to be a school that a lot of diamonds come from. Yeah. One thing that stood out to me, I think this was his interview with Jeffrey Lee. I think Jeffrey Lee wrote the story at AuburnLive.com. He talked about, Blockton talked about how Coach Garrett and Freeze were recruiting him when he was at Liberty. And it's like, man, just like the relentless, you know, I mean, they're, they're, they're recruiting everybody even at Liberty before they got to Auburn, which I thought was, thought well, was a yeah, nice touch too. Very telling. I mean, I, I hate to do it, but let's just call it a spade a spade. Very telling how he talked about his relation with Hugh Freeze and that he never had. I mean, the, the previous coaching staff before Harson got in there, Gus Malzahn was recruiting Blockton as a freshman. That is That is on record. So you would think that the new coaching staff with Brian Harson would pick up where he left off. He said he never had a face-to-face -face or a sit-down meeting with him. I mean, I, of course, and to do that. his brother is on the team. His <laughs> brother came as a – you targeted his brother to come play for you, and you disrespect the family. Of course, to, to talk to him face-to-face, -face, you might have to get up out of your chair in your office or get out of your Escalade. Wow. But to do that, you, you need to, to – it just goes to show you – what a difference relationships mean. Yeah. And pouring right. into people, getting like Joseph Phillips, getting in on him early and mm -hmm. showing him the love. You have to do that nowadays. And if you think the school or you can just coach him up and talk ball is going to be the difference, you're sorely mistaken. All right. Who is next to commit after Blockton, obviously? But first, uh, Daryl, you spoke with Coach Shook, Blockton's head coach. We will discuss some of the things he told you. 
uh, in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Today's show brought to you by our friends at Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs, they make the most comfortable pair of shorts ever, Daryl. In fact, over the weekend, had a family pool day. I swam in the Bird Dogs. I got out of the pool. They were dry like three minutes later just because of the material. It's high-quality stuff. You also can work out in these Bird Dogs. You can wear them everywhere. They look like you know, nice-looking khaki shorts. But also, I've said this before, and it seems to be the selling point, my wife likes it when I wear them. So that's really, all, it's really all that matters. But seriously, uh, I think you'll love them. Uh, be sure to check out our friends at Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash college and enter promo code college for a free Yeti-style tumbler with your order. That is birddogs.com slash college or promo code college for a free Yeti-style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. Daryl Daprich, our guest on this Monday Show, you spoke to Coach Shook, uh, the Pike Road head coach, about Malik Blockton over the weekend. What exactly did he tell you? I asked him three specific questions and said I wanted to get some feedback and some quotes on the record. The first question I asked him is, give me his biggest attribute, his biggest strength, what you feel like Malik's you know, biggest drawing card is as a defensive player. And he said he's a very instinctive football player. He has violent hands. And he's very explosive at the point of attack. Very good to hear that. That that's all those attributes are what you want in a defensive lineman, right? Yeah, sure. Right. Then I was wondering at you know his weight right now is two seventy. Is he going to play inside? Is he going to play outside? Could he slide to nose tackle at some point later in his career if he got up to 310, 320? And Coach Shook said, I see him playing defensive end early, like his brother. But I can see them moving him inside as he gets in a college weight room and gets on a college nutrition plan. Malik can be one of the most athletic 300-pound defensive linemen in the SEC, and he could get there rather quickly is what he said. That's great. I think that's all great news. And so, I mean, we've seen Marcus Harris. You know, he was really a three technique last year. Now it sounds like he's going to start a defensive end. So, I mean, it's kind of interesting – how they both were kind of tweeners and can kind of do both. And so it'll be fun to see where exactly Blockton um, ends up. His frame seems to be bigger than his brother's, I think. I I think I feel better about Blockton weighing 300 than Harris weighing 300. You know, you think a lot of times when you when you hear defensive lineman, you think sacks. And he's not going to be a big sack guy. He will get some just because of his push. He's not twitchy. He doesn't come off the end very athletic like that. He'll he can get sacks from the middle of the field and interior because mm. of how heady he is, his in, you know how football smart he is. But he pushes people. He pushes the line of scrimmage. You know your hands. If your hands are violent and aggressive, you can get fr- free. Get around the the, the guard. So that's going to be how he gets his sacks. He's not going to be a sack machine, but he'll get his fair share just by push, right? I think that that's where you're going to get a guy that can get to 310, 305, somewhere like that, move the pile a little bit back into the quarterback. But you're right. I think at the end of the day, he'll be a little bit different type of defensive lineman than his brother because I feel like he's going to play interior line and yeah. he's going to be a run stopper, but an, but very athletic and very quick with his hands. So it'll be – It'll be interesting to see how that equates to maybe stripping the ball from running back, trying to break the line of scrimmage and sacks and that kind of thing. Yeah, I think like just by nature of what roles we're projecting he's going to play versus like what Marcus Harris's brother does, I think Harris is going to be flashier. I'm not saying better. I'm just saying flashier. I mean, you, you talk about Malik Blockton and what we kind of think he's going to do as far as pushing the pocket, like you said. Those guys, you know, that stuff doesn't really show up in the box score, but it makes your team better, right? And so that's kind of what I was hinting at when I said at the top of the show, like, I think he raises the floor of the 2024 class because I think he's a solid football player, Daryl. I, I, you know, he's, I don't think he's ever going to lead your team or even your defensive line in tackles or pressures or anything like that. But when he's on the field a few years from now, he's going to make the defensive front better. And I think that's exactly, exactly what we need when you look at it. Because right now with this class, I mean, there's a lot of defensive backs. You've got your running back and your quarterback. And you've got, you know, your edge with Phillips and all of that. But 
you know, you don't really have any big men on either side of the ball yet until now you've added Blockton. And so you've got some, 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 some meat there. But I think, I just think it raises the floor of this class. I mean, I really, really like this addition that we got over the weekend. Give you a scenario that falls right in line when you're talking about how that type of defensive player maybe doesn't explode off the stat sheet or yeah. go in the. So let's say he pushes the line of scrimmage, right? And he he clogs that middle and he pushes the, the offensive guard back into the backfield. And that running back that's taking the handoff stops and has to adjust and go a different direction. And someone comes off the edge and tackles him for a five yard loss. Well, that guy that tackled him for the five yard loss gets all the glory and gets this five yard, the, the, the TFL. But it's because of what Blockton did by pushing the line of scrimmage backwards that caused that. Or if he causes the offensive guard to run into, you know, the ball to come loose or the quarterback, a sack. That kind of thing is exactly what you, you're referring to is that it may not come off the stat sheet. But the good thing about that is there's plenty of film. Yeah. And, and scouts and people like that see that. So it's 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 still very, very productive and beneficial. And it doesn't even have to be a sack, right? I mean, it could be a thing where two or three years from now. You know, if, if he is scooting inside, the guard has to pay a little bit more attention to him. And so, you know, maybe they do a double team and they're trying to peel off to the next level and they can't. And De- D'Angelo Barber, DJ Barber is there to stop a running back for a two yard game. And all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's second eight, you win first down, right? I yes. think I think it's stuff like that that's really going to kind of be a thing where none of that's flashy, right? None of that's flashy at all. But allowing just two yards on first down is great. I mean, that's what good yeah. football teams do. And I think uh, I think Blockton can kind of help lead the way with all of that. So all in all, great stuff. Did, was was that all three of uh, the? Questions? I had a third. I had a third, but it was interesting. I, okay. I like. I wanted to comp because I had seen some other publications comp him to like Andrew Williams, who played at Auburn as a defensive lineman. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see what Granger thought, what Coach Shook thought, and he just said at this point there is no comp except that expect him to be an elite SEC defensive lineman in the next couple of years. I'll take it. So, he, and he doesn't, and he doesn't blow sunshine either. Granger's a very honest, down to earth. You know, he doesn't hype up things. He tells it like it is. And so I think he's, you know, and, and let's keep in mind too, he hasn't have, even had the opportunity to coach him a down in a real game yet. Good point. This is Granger's first year coming in to to Pike Road from Trinity. So we're talking about summer workouts and spring work and all that kind of stuff in film. Obviously, you've seen a lot of film because you have to when you're coming in. So right. h- how much different is it going to sound after he gets to coach him in real live games? Right. Uh, I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And, and maybe we can get him on the show. We'll certainly see. We'll certainly see. All right. Who could be next to commit? to this 2024 class. We take our guesses next right here on Locked On Auburn. I want to encourage you to join the Locked On Auburn Discord. It is free. All you have to do is click the link in the episode description down below. Daryl, there are currently 10 members now of this 2024 class. Thank you to Malik Blockton's commitment. I believe the next one will be another defensive back for this class, joining Faustin and Amon Lane and a handful of other defensive backs. But I think the next one will be Jalen Crawford, who's a Georgia kid. A lot of guys want this player, but I think when it's all said and done, and I think it's going to happen fairly soon, Daryl, but I think Jalen Crawford will join Auburn's class next. Yeah, I had five names I wrote down, and Crawford was the first of those Mm -hmm. five names. You know, corner, Auburn's done such a great job in the secondary the last few years. Um, in fact, it's considered the strength of this team by a lot of national publications. He's the number 25 overall player in Georgia, the number 20 cornerback in the country. I'll take it. From, from Parkview. So I'll take I'll it. Take That'd it. be a nice get for Auburn. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, can I see if I can guess your five? We haven't go talked ahead, Go ahead. You got four more. Yeah, let's go. And I'm keeping okay. it as 2024 because a got 2025 it. kid could pop, and I won't say with that, but I want to just focus on 2024. So not Alvin Henderson. <laughs> don't, Correct. Don't say <laughs> Alvin Henderson. There you go. Okay. You just, yeah, you just like, uh, there you go. Perry Thompson flipping? Yes. See one of them? Okay. I, he is one of them. Hmm. Riddick? Demarcus Riddick? Yes, he is one oh, of them. The Georgia linebacker commit. So I've got two more. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Give me a hint. What position? Linebacker. Another linebacker. The, the Arkansas kid? Yes, Wyatt Simmons from Searcy Harding Academy. Okay. I think he pops. And then I have one more. See if you can get it. It's an offensive tackle. Is it uh I forgot his first name. Is it Carter? No, I that's some, a lot of I I'm 
he's from California. I hope he does. I'm I'm not as sure in my gut as him. Sure. I think Jameson Riggs from Hiram, Georgia. I like him uh, more, actually. Yeah, I do too. He's a number 34 interior offensive lineman in the country, number 54 overall are in Georgia. So, and then there I was have a, a kid. go I, ahead. I have a bad feeling about Riggs. I don't know why I haven't been told anything. It just seems like he really wants to go to Georgia Tech because his dad played there. Yeah. Um, I'm concerned about Georgia Tech in that one. Well, they're, they're looking at, I think there's a backup plan and I'll go ahead and tell you, I didn't put him in the five because I thought that Riggs would go, but I think if he does not, Reese Baker is somebody that Auburn will go down to and take from Madison Academy where carry on went uh, yeah. right now, unranked, but will, won't be at the end of the year, six, five, two sixty. That's why he's got to get some weight on him. Uh, but he camped with Auburn during the first elite camp and the coaches were very impressed and high on him. So I, you know, I don't know if he's got a committable offer yet, but I think if, if a guy like Carter or Riggs does not, then you slide down and maybe get, get them all. Becker. Freeze. Coach Freeze, yeah. get all of them. If if, a, if an offensive tackle wants to come here, you let them come here. <laughs> there should be no backup plan. Let's just get all the offensive tackles we possibly can. I agree with that. I mean, I agree with you. I just don't know if that's the coaching staff philosophy, but, but uh, it needs I'm to sure be. it's not. Yeah, yeah I'm sure I, it's I, not. I just think they, they always have like this – plan and counter plan and that kind of thing so that's the that's the five and then by default not to say that baker's not going to end up being a good player i just think right now he's got to do some things his senior season to climb up some boards yeah that way. what do you like most about the current state of this 2024 class i mean you look at it it's like in the mid 40s uh yeah. it's 48 on 247 i don't know what it is on on three but what do you um well i mean how do you feel about this class right now I think it needs some star power. I like the class right now where it's at. I think it's solid. It's twentieth on on three for what that's worth. I, I just would like to go above. So I don't. I want better than solid. I want very very good. I want top fifteen, top twelve, top ten class. And I think if you talk about getting a Riddick and a Thompson and some of these other guys, that'll happen. But what what I like like most about it right now is the diversity of the class. It's not position heavy. You got a quarterback in this class, which I love getting. You got a running back and Fat Burnett. You got Kane as a receiver. You got a linebacker and an edge and Phillips, and now you know there, there's and just then, and then Barber. like six defensive backs. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Lane, and then the Kelsey. I mean, they're, they're Faustin. But yeah. I like the fact that they've got a you know a linebacker like Barber, and then they got an edge in Phillips. I mean, they seem to have diversified a little bit now, getting a defensive tackle uh, in blocked and get a couple more offensive linemen. And, you know, it, it, I like the diversity of it. I like, I, I wouldn't mind taking another running back, Zach. I think I'd, I'd like another running back. Of course, I want two more wide receivers. Um, and then, uh, uh, you know, a boatload of offensive tackles and a couple more defensive tackles. If this class gets to 20, I think we're halfway there. If this class can get to 20, pick up a couple five stars along the way, this class will end up being top 12, which is exactly what Hugh Freeze needs in 2024. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I think you, you got to get one of the receivers, whether it's Perry Thompson or Cam Coleman. You got to get one of those guys to flip. Well, that, that that Malcolm Simmons kid is another name I've heard that's a, a borderline five star. That's almost as is probably just as good as Cam Coleman, and I heard he could be a, a, an option for Auburn as well. Yeah, I mean we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, they got to get those guys, and then Riddick would be huge. And I'm high on Jalen Crawford. I know he's a four star, but I think he's a really, really dang good four star. There's another defensive back out there. Is it Lewis? Is his na last name Lewis? I heard two defensive backs. Solomon that, Lewis, right? Solomon Lewis. Yeah. That, that could pop, uh, both going, coming in. So, I mean, I just, Auburn's becoming like DBU. I mean, they are just, I mean, you look again, the secondary right now is their strength going into the season. As far as the Auburn football team, they lose, though. People are like, why are they going so heavy on defensive backs? They lose four or five after this year. So you got to rebuild. Yeah, yeah. The, I bet they get some DBs in the transfer portal after the season, too. They have yeah. to. Plug and play, guys. They have to. Absolutely. Daryl, uh, a week from now, you and I will be in Nashville, along with several other Locked On folks covering SEC Media Days. And so that'll certainly be fun. Be sure to hang out and check out all of our coverage from – Radio Row. We're ready to rock and roll all week. And so um, I don't know if 
I don't know if he'll be on the show before then or not, but if that's not the case, probably see don't you need in Nashville. Uh, probably not. Probably everyone's sick of seeing me three times in five days, right? I mean, they're just. I don't just think like, so. Enough, I don't think so. Enough dap. Let's move on. So yeah, but uh, it'll be fun. I'm looking forward to going out there and really, really hitting it hard. It's going to be a lot of good content. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. So, uh, how can people check out everything you've got going on, buddy? Follow me at Twitter, DAP6410. You can catch me Monday mornings at 710 on WANI, Auburn Up a Like This Morning. And then in the Discord, the Auburn Discord. Love uh, interacting with, with folks in the Discord. Absolutely. Absolutely. Follow, follow me on social at Z Blackery. Read all of our work at AuburnDaily.com. We'll see you tomorrow. This has been Locked on Auburn.